Hi, welcome to the Tales of Success YouTube channel with me, Vicky Sharp. And today we're talking to resident Labrador nutrition expert, Sam Raggett. We're going to be giving you information on supplements, how to supplement your Labrador, what with, and the health benefits of them. And if you stick around till the end, we're going to give you some discounts to use with our friends at Pure Flax and You Move. Today I'm joined by Labrador nutrition expert, Sam Raggett. Sam, welcome. Hello. Hello. For everyone that hasn't met you before, just give us a little rundown of who you are, what you do and why I'm chatting to you today. So I'm Sam. I'm the nutritionist for Tales for Success. Um, I trained to be a nutritionist due to my Mabel not being very well when she was a puppy and it all turned out to be um, a rice intolerance. So I decided to inform myself as much as I could and now I like to help other people on their journey with their Labradors. Good and you're really good at it I have to say so um, thank you for doing that. What we really like about your story is that you have studied to be a nutritionist because of previous experience with your own Labrador. Yeah. So all of this information you have is things that you've been through yourself, you fully understand uh, some of the challenges that Labradors specifically face. So thank you for giving us some of your time to talk us through the subject of the day, which is going to be supplements for Labradors. Can you just tell us why supplements are so important, not just for any dog, but specifically for Labradors? Well, even if your Labrador is on the best possible diet, um, they can still be lacking in certain areas as, as humans do. So by supplementing, you can address certain areas um, of a Labrador's health. So you can prevent things happening um, before they actually happen. So, you know, everyone knows with Labradors, they, they can suffer from joint problems. So by addressing that, by supplementing, you can prevent it before it actually happens. It's always good to supplement. And I think most people probably start with supplements in their dog's life when they start to see a physical health problem. So when they start limping or get arthritis, it's not just about bones, though, is it supplements? It does lots of things for coat, health, teeth, all those kind of things. So is it kind of nose to tail um, condition of a dog that we can improve with supplements? Oh, definitely. I mean, the, there's so many on the market. You can buy a supplement for absolutely anything. And it is an absolute minefield. So that's what we're here for, is to help you get the best ones for your dog to address what you need it to address and not to waste your money on, on things that you don't really need. I love the fact you said don't waste your money because as Labrador owners, we waste a lot of money on toys, food, treats because we love them so much. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mentioned as well with supplements, we usually start giving them to Labradors when we notice a physical health condition that we worry about, so limping or arthritis. Is that the right thing to do? Should we wait till our dog is limping before we consider supplements? Or should we actually just be giving those supplements pretty much from day one? What is going to give our dogs the best chance of staying healthy? Well, for the best possible chance, really, they should start on supplements from day one when you get them, really. Obviously, they're brilliant if your dog has already started to show symptoms, but, you know, you'd rather your dog not to show these symptoms anyway. So if you start it from, from the very day you get them, you can prevent it, which is, is so much better. So if you get a joint supplement, it doesn't just address arthritis, which you, it thinks years ahead. It actually helps them grow and for those bones to actually form and connect together. And it helps prevent any kind of arthritis coming. So you could have a Labrador for years running around happy rather than going, oh, they're limping a bit, better start. And you've got such an uphill struggle then as well once you start it, once the signs are there. Yeah, absolutely. And like us humans, we take multivitamins, not because yeah. there's anything wrong with us. It's just kind of that insurance policy of we know we're going to get the best things we need to make sure we're doing the same for our Labradors. Interestingly, years gone by, we used to just think that if we gave our dogs a really good quality food, that would take care of everything. And we didn't need to put anything else in there. We speak in our webinars quite a bit about nutritionally complete foods. And yeah. actually there's very limited foods out there that will give your dog everything that they ideally need. So we shouldn't just rely upon the quality of the food, should we? No, not at all. Um, in our webinars, we talk about websites that you can go to to check the nutritional value of 
of your food and anybody that has used that will see that to get a hundred percent is near on impossible so that's why we supplement and by supplementing you also know that you're giving your dog the right quantity of whichever supplement you're giving them as well so be it vitamin c be it your omega-3 or 6 you know your food can only do so much and a lot of that nutrition could also be lost in the process of making it does your dog eat the full amount that kind of thing so by supplementing you you are ensuring that your dog's getting a hundred percent rather than 92 percent or 80 percent so and we want to give our dogs a hundred percent all of the time yeah and supplements you know people think supplements is just like put a tablet in your dog's dinner you can supplement a dog's food just with other foods as well and that's also something we talk about a lot during our webinars of toppers that you can put on their food that gives them extra goodness into their diet so for me personally i never rely upon one thing to supplement my dog it's a whole host of different foods medication oils tablets all these kind of things that work together to give the best health yeah. are you in agreement that more variety is is kind of the way forward there uh, oh definitely i mean if we if we were given a meal that just consisted of the same thing every day and then a plate full of vitamin tablets we would lose interest and you know you're only getting a certain quality and amount from that with vitamin c i talk about this a lot um a dog loses their vitamin c um quite a lot through stress and anxiety and through training as well when they're, they're constantly on the go so by losing their vitamin c they start to lose their their free radicals in their bodies and their antioxidants so by Putting something as simple as sweet potato on top of their kibble boosts their vitamin C up straight away. So you haven't had to go out and buy um, a vitamin C supplement, which there are plenty to do. You know, you can can get them. But just by going and getting a sweet potato and cooking it and mashing it up and putting it on their, their kibble straight away, you're giving them the, the vitamin C that they've lost throughout the day if they've had a stressful situation or done a lot of, of, of training so we don't need to give them expensive supplements we just need to make sure we know what to give them a lot of it is just thinking about what food have we got in the fridge as human food that is also good for dogs so sweet potato you know we talk about bananas blueberries cottage cheese little bits of these things as long as we know what it's doing for our dog and that they can tolerate it are also pretty good aren't they to start adding in there exactly exactly so you know you don't think oh i've got to go out and spend hundreds of pounds on all of this because i've seen an advert somewhere and it says it's the best you know quite a lot of the time you can address it through just normal normal food okay great stuff so from a nutritionist point of view what kind of supplements are out there and what should we be giving to our Labradors? And we're talking of Labrador specific here today because we're Labrador trainers. For other dog owners as well that watch this, they will find value to this as well. So it can be a broader spectrum of dogs, right? If you want to supplement, I would definitely use minimum of the two supplements. So one of those would be a joint supplement. Um, so as I've said before, that helps with their growth. It helps, um, you know, even if they've had an injury, it helps speed up the process of fixing that injury. So you, you want to get a really decent joint supplement, which you start from the day you get it, as long as the packet says that you can. And um, there's obviously a lot out on the market and some say you can't. So the two that I always recommend is the Eden joint supplement and do you move? So I know both of those you can use from eight weeks. They're really, really good. Um, I also say about getting a good Omega three and six oil. Um, dogs actually can't make that themselves naturally. So they have to get that from their food. And a lot of food on the market doesn't have the, the right quantities in to help with their coat, to help with their joint, to help even with their brain function. And obviously with a puppy, you want that brain to develop to its fullest potential so you need to get um like an oil that you can put over their food that has omega-3 and omega-6 in i always recommend pure flax because it's sustainable and it's really good a lot of people do use salmon oil but salmon oil was historically the thing that people put on but i know a lot of people complained really about the expense and the smell with that particularly depending on which one it was is flax similar or is it better in my opinion, it's better. So I used to use salmon oil with um, Mabel 
and then then we got Dennis and we moved Mabel on to flaxseed and the, on with pure flax and the difference was so noticeable so I mean straight away Dennis was brilliant he was shiny and it worked brilliantly but then it was noted with Mabel because we went from salmon oil on to pure flax and the difference was you know amazing when you look at the labels as well the omega three and six percentages are so much higher than they are in the salmon oil which is is which is what you want because the higher it is the better it is just make sure you give the right dosage you just pour it over the top of their meal start right from day dot and coat will look lovely their joints will be lovely everything it is really good stuff I've seen Mabel and Dennis and I have to say they do both look pretty glossy and amazing so um, yeah whatever you're doing definitely works for them and I think it's also important to say at this point Tales of Success, you Sam and me we're not affiliated with any of the brands that we mention we don't work for them we don't have any sort of deal with them to publicize them we're simply telling people what we do from our own personal experience of being Labrador experts, trainers and nutritionists and we both have Labradors and we're talking about what we do for our Labradors because we've got their best interests at heart. So we wouldn't do anything to, to kind of go against that. And you mentioned about Eden being yeah. one of the tablet forms that you would give. So just to sort of say what I use for my dogs, I give you move to my dogs. Um, again, very similar sort of thing. And you have to find the right one for you as well, because budgets will be a consideration as well as the goodness of it. But do you have any particular thoughts on you move and Eden and what the differences are are they all pretty much the same thing so the you move will come in a tablet form the Eden will come in the like little pellets that you can sprinkle over over your food so both have the ingredients that I would always look for um the only difference is with Eden is that the strength is slightly stronger. If you are trying to really prevent something like arthritis and you know it's going to come if you or if you've got something genetic, then that one is slightly better because you've you've got the higher quantities. If you're doing it um, for like maintenance and things like that, then you move is is just as good. It just hasn't got as the strength behind it as as Eden has. So they're both exactly the same, both good quality. You know, I've used both both with mine so yeah they are both really good so joint supplement we're looking at things like eden and you move coat health we're looking at things like pure flax or salmon oil but your preference is is flax is there anything else we need to know about flax and um that kind of thing how do we get it where do we get it from how do we give it to our dogs and other than having a dog that looks really healthy is it going to be doing stuff inside as well to keep them healthy Oh yeah, so it's not just about a shiny coat. I mean, you can get a shiny coat by using certain food brands. Yeah, it's a shiny coat, but there's no, no health benefit behind it at all. With the Pure Flax, the Amigas that they use, it helps with their heart health. We all know what Labradors are like. Do they ever stop? No. So it helps with that. It helps with their joint mobility, but it helps with their brain function as well. And it's also really good for their immune system as well. We all know that Labradors will eat anything that you put in front of them, whether you want them to or not. So we need to make sure that our immune system is tip top. So using these Omega 3 and 6s, that does really help with that as, as well. So it's not just about being shiny. It's, it's a lot more than that putting goodness on the outside and the inside. You mentioned about dogs looking quite healthy on some kibbles, basically because they put a lot of oils into their food. Yeah. On the outside, you look like you've got a very healthy dog, but that's not necessarily replicated inside. No, no, and there's, there's a few brands that, you know, do promote healthy, shiny coats, and you see a lot of people say, oh yeah, they're on this and they're really shiny, but they actually use sunflower oil, so, that comes out into their fur to make it really shiny but that's all it does so yeah it's if, if you put a really nice oil on your hair you know it may not have any nutritional benefit for your hair but it might make it look really nice and shiny so that's basically what this is so you do want to look for something that does the whole what it says on the packet really so like with with the omega three and six oils that's that's what it does so it's not just about looking good so we know we can give joint supplements from pretty much eight weeks for a lot of brands obviously we need to check on the back to make sure things like flax oil is that safe for really young puppies or do we have to wait for them to be a little bit older before they start on that 
I I started it with Dennis, you know, right right from the start. So yeah, it's perfectly safe. I mean, we buy it in the oil form from Pure Flax. You can also put um, flax seeds on top as well, which is something we talk about in our webinars as well. Is there anything else that we should be thinking about as far as supplements goes? What we should give to them? How frequently? Different products that you would recommend? So, I mean, you can buy lots of multivitamins out there. I would always say if your dog has got a sensitive tummy or if they're a senior dog, you can buy like enzymes and um, it comes, um, it's lovely, it's green. It helps um, the enzymes in their stomach because if they do have a poor digestive system or they are old, their enzymes disappear and they find it really hard to make them again. So by giving them um, the enzymes, it helps break down the food that you are giving them. So you might be giving the best diet in the world, but where they haven't got the enzymes to break it down, they, they aren't actually taking in the nutrients. So sometimes a dog may need a little help to actually break down the nutrients that you're, you're giving. And if your dog's healthy or it's something you don't wanna do, it, your dog won't suffer from not getting it. But if you do have a dog, that is old or has got digestive issues, then it is something to, to think about so that they, they can get the nutrients that they actually need. And talking about dogs of different ages getting different things, do we need to adjust what we give our dogs as they get older? So we know that puppies are pretty active and their bones and their teeth and their coats are developing. Do we need to change the type of supplements we give them at different life stages? Because an eight week old puppy is very different from a 10 year old Labrador. Yeah, so I think with you move, they do it in stages. You can buy different ages so that the, the quantities and the ratios change slightly. I think on the back of the Eden, you can give more or less as well. So just be mindful that the older they are, they may need to change it slightly. It will still be all the same good quality ingredients. It just might be slightly more of one thing and less of another just to help them in their, their stage of life. So just bear that in mind, but it will always say on the packet as to what, what to do. So each supplement is different and it has its own way of doing things, but we're always here to help. So if ever you need to ask anything, you can just email us and I'm always happy to have a look over it and help you through it. Yeah, absolutely. At that point, I'm going to say now, if you want to get in touch with us, you can find us at talesofsuccess.com. Another question, Sam, is do we supplement boys and girls differently? So girls are often in season. Do we have to give them different things to cope for their body conditions then? Or is it the same across the board? No, I mean, when it comes to supplementing, it's it's exactly the same. So keep following the instructions and keep, keep going. I mean, if a dog's in season at most, they may be off their food or they may want more food so just don't panic too much if they're off the food and the supplements on there because it, it's not going to do much damage if they go for a week without all the supplements that you normally have so don't get hung up on that but just make sure you do it as regularly as possible brilliant i mean we could talk about health nutrition supplements for quite literally hours and sometimes we do at our webinars um, there's loads more to go into and what we would say is if anyone is interested in this subject to give your labrador the best possible health care supplements and food you can join us at one of our webinars which you can find through talesofsuccess.com sam thank you so much for joining us and giving us that really useful information thank you for having me